Okay, we're up to question six now on the January 2010 BY1 paper. Uh, this question, a uh, little bit unusual for the Welsh Joint Board. Uh, they've got uh, quite a lot of information here for you uh, to read through. Um, basically, um, the examiner has decided to put in an unusual carbohydrate molecule one that isn't uh, mentioned on your syllabus. However, what is mentioned on the syllabus is uh, about uh, the modification of cellulose with um, sort of non-organic uh, 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 molecules such as uh, nitrogen containing molecules. All right, so cellu cellulose can be modified by the addition of uh, sort of nitrogen containing groups. Um, this is sort of what's happening with this question. Um, so let me take you through the uh, the passage then. Uh, heteropolysaccharides consist of long chains of monosaccharides. Each monosaccharide is attached to a non-carbohydrate uh, part. Okay. Uh, bacterial cell walls are made from a heteropolysaccharide consisting of two different monosaccharides, abbreviated to NAG and NAM. Okay. So they're the uh, names of the monosaccharides. Uh, the linear polymer is made up of alternating NAG and NAM molecules linked by glycosidic bonds. Okay, so that's, uh, that's fine because all carbohydrates are joined together by uh, glycosidic bonds. Okay, uh, these chains are arranged in the same way as cellulose of plant cell walls. And there you go. He's making the link back to the, uh, the syllabus now where uh, you do have to know about the structure of cellulose and be aware that it can be modified with uh, the addition of uh, various uh, groups. Okay. Uh, lastly then, uh, you're told the glycosidic bonds can be broken by uh, the enzyme uh, lysozyme. Okay. Um, lysozyme is, uh, is an enzyme that can be found in tears and uh, it certainly does... Uh, uh, destroy bacterial uh, cell walls and, and you're told that this polysaccharide uh, is found in uh, bacterial cell walls okay uh, right so you do have to um, remember now that uh, you may have to relate back to some of the information uh, presented in the first part of this question all right so never lose sight of that if you if you go in through the questions make sure you know that there may be some information uh, originally stated uh, that you can use okay um, let's have a quick look at this structure actually um, it certainly does have similarities to cellulose look if you look at the uh, glycosidic bonds uh, they are alternating okay uh, which you should know about um, and if we look at the uh, oxygen within the ring structure you can see that that is also alternating as well so you can see that the uh, beta glucose molecule, uh, molecules have actually been flipped by 180 degrees okay uh, and of course the molecule is completely straight uh, which is also typical um, of uh, cellulose okay then it's asking now first off draw a circle around the part of one of the monosaccharide units that is non-carbohydrate. Okay, um, I think this is quite difficult to be honest, um, but uh, the non-carbohydrate part, okay, would be a, a simple uh, molecule uh, attached uh, to the uh, glucose molecule. Okay, um, so this here is not a carbohydrate okay uh, the reason being is that a carbohydrate um, has uh, carbon hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio of one to two to one okay so I would say that 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 group there is a non carbohydrate okay uh, because of that okay I think that's the most obvious one uh, to go for and of course it's got uh, nitrogen in it as well okay and uh, carbohydrates uh, don't contain uh, nitrogen okay uh, right okay so I hope that helped there 
Um, next then, on the diagram, draw an arrow labelled B to show a bond which would be broken by the enzyme uh, lysozyme. So straight away now, okay, if you hadn't have read the initial passage at the start of this question, you may be confused as to what lysozyme is. Uh, but let's scroll back up because it does tell you, uh, there it is, the uh, enzyme lysozyme breaks the glycosidic bond. Okay, and you should be able to identify where a glycosidic bond is. Uh, so it's there. So the examiner wanted you to put an arrow there and uh, to label it uh, B. Okay, so simple enough. That's all you have to do there. Okay, name the type of reaction involved in the breaking uh, of the bond. All right, uh, there's two main reactions you need to be aware of. One is condensation reaction, which actually forms uh, glyc um, glycosidic bonds. And the reaction that breaks the glycosidic bond uh, is the reverse of condensation, uh, which is known as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is when you chemically add uh, water to break the bond. Um, all right, so the, uh, the answer there is hydrolysis. Okay, uh, moving on to part four then. Uh, explain what is meant by the phrase arranged in the same way as the change in chains in cellulose. Um, so that uh, that question there is relating to uh, the passage uh, in the uh, the first part of the question, okay, uh, which is uh, by here. Um, these chains are arranged in the same way as cellulose of plant cell walls. Okay, uh, so basically what that question wants you to write is basically the, the, the sort of structural features of cellulose. If this heteropolysaccharide uh, is arranged the same way as cellulose, then uh, the examiner wants you to describe the structure of cellulose, uh, basically. Okay, so uh, we're looking at the, the diagram of the heteropolysaccharide here. Uh, what are the features within this molecule that are the same as cellulose? Uh, well, for a starters, it's a straight molecule. Okay. Um, the other thing, of course, is the alternating uh, glycosidic bonds. They go up and down. Okay. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the uh, alternating OH groups. Okay. Remember that the OH groups need to point up and down in order for them to form hydrogen bonds between uh, the neighboring chains of beta glucose okay so this hetero uh, polysaccharide is actually going to form um, long chains which stack together like that okay and they're all joined by hydrogen bonds all right so this should be familiar to you what I'm drawing uh, from my notes that structure there, of course, is called a microfibril. When you get lots and lots of uh, chains of beta glucose joined in together by hydrogen bonds, all right, and that's uh, that's what will be occurring with this hetero uh, polysaccharide because it has uh, similar features to the the cellulose uh, polysaccharide. Okay. Um, the, the molecule, of course, will be extremely strong because of the many hydrogen bonds, okay? And um, the, uh, the features there, uh, you need to list down uh, in your answer. Okay, so uh, let's drop those in. Okay, so uh, I've written in there that the hydroxyl groups point up and down to allow the formation of hydrogen bonds between neighbouring chains uh, to form microfibrils, okay? Uh, the structure is very strong due to the many hydrogen bonds. And lastly, then, the beta-glucose monomers alternate, uh, as do the uh, glycosidic uh, bonds. Okay, um, so let's move on then to part B. Uh, the question now changes to talk about um, the lysozyme uh, enzyme. So uh, this is really to do with protein structure, because that's what enzymes are. They're proteins. Okay. And uh, the examiner now has um, drawn out um, a diagram there. Okay, um, if I scroll down, you can see uh, the rest of the molecule. Uh, just so you know, um, these circles here with three letters in 
they represent amino acids and uh, amino acids can be abbreviated uh, to three letters okay and that's what's going on here uh, you should recognize that bond uh, and that one and that one and so on as being disulfide bonds okay um, there's no other bond apart from of course uh, the peptide bond which uh, links the uh, amino acids together okay so the examiner hasn't really shown any other bonds uh, in that diagram um, so the first question is asking you to state the highest level of protein structure shown in the diagram now um, you've got to use a bit of common sense here because that diagram really doesn't show any secondary structures it, you can't really see um, an alpha helix uh, you probably can see a beta pleated sheet I suppose this this region here could be a beta pleated sheet all right um, so how can you decide whether uh, or what level of protein structure is shown well the key is the disulfide bonds here all right uh, you should know that disulfide bonds are only formed in the tertiary structure all right they're formed between uh, cysteine amino acids okay so that's the key there is the formation of those disulfide bonds so the actual uh, uh, level of protein structure is tertiary structure okay so there's the answer typed in uh, next you're asked to explain the importance of the disulfide linkages uh, to the functioning of the enzyme okay um, so these uh, these disulfide bonds if we uh, pop up uh, to the diagram again uh, what they're actually doing is they're actually linking together different regions of the polypeptide chain okay so where I've circled here you've got the cysteine um, at position 30 within the polypeptide chain and that is linking to a cysteine molecule um, that's actually in position uh, 10 position 15 115 sorry okay so that disulfide bond has brought together distant regions of the polypeptide chain and has bonded them together all right now that's happening throughout uh, this protein structure you've got these disulfide bonds bringing together uh, cysteine amino acids and that is actually creating a very very specific shape um, three-dimensional shape okay so what's happening is that those disulfide bonds are essential to the correct configuration or shape of the enzyme and hence the correct shape uh, of the active site all right so it's all to do with um, shape and maintaining that shape to allow uh, that enzyme to um, uh, complete its function okay so uh, the other things you can say there because it is talking about the functioning uh, of the enzyme uh, you've mentioned there that the 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 shape of the enzyme is, is important and the active site so you could say that uh, once you have an active site there um, that active site is complementary to the substrate and it will allow enzyme substrate complexes to be formed okay uh, so you've got three marks so again try and get every uh, sort of relevant point uh, into your answer uh, I've typed in the answer there and I've said uh, the disulfide bonds link different parts of the polypeptide chain together which produces a specific uh, shape okay um, this allows the active site to have the shape um, uh, so this allows the active site to have the correct shape and to be uh, complementary uh, to the substrate okay uh, this will allow enzyme substrate complexes to be formed uh, so I've linked um, the um, functioning of the enzyme to the importance of those disulfide uh, bonds okay um, let's move on then to the next uh, part of the question okay then uh, part C then is uh, still 
uh, relating to enzymes, but this time it's talking about a different enzyme called catalase. Uh, now catalase is uh, an enzyme you may have done an experiment on uh, in uh, school or college. All right, it is an enzyme that uh, breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Okay, so you get lots and lots of oxygen being liberated by this uh, this enzyme. Okay, um, so in an investigation um, was carried out to determine the relative amount of catalase in samples of potato, liver, and apple. The samples were ground to a pulp and added to hydrogen peroxide. All right, so uh, these uh, these uh, food samples here all contain hydrogen peroxide. Sorry, all contain cat catalase, and the investigation is being done to try and determine which one contains the the most amount of catalase so what they're doing is they're putting potato liver and apple into separate containers and they're going to add the substrate which is hydrogen peroxide okay and in this experiment they're actually going to measure the height of the bubbles uh, being produced you do get a sort of foamy production um, occurring uh, with this this catalase uh, reaction so they uh, they have decided to measure the height of the bubbles in centimeters as an uh, as a measurement of how much catalase is present in those uh, food samples okay so basically the higher the height of the bubbles the more catalase the sample will have so you can see from the from the table the liver has the highest uh, height of bubbles. That is something I would expect to be true because the liver does have a lot of catalase uh, in its cells. Uh, the potato comes in uh, next and lastly then the uh, the apple. Okay. So uh, part one then is asking you to state two variables that should be controlled uh, in this investigation. All right. So this is very much a um, practical based uh, question uh, it relates to your by3 and the practicals you've done uh, in the lab all right so uh, what needs to be controlled is 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 everything really so you get um, reliable results all right so uh, these these are the types of things you need to control okay so you got these three samples of uh, of food here uh, you'd actually want to have the same uh, uh, mass or the same volume of these uh, um, potato, liver and apple. If you've got different masses, for example, uh, then you're going to have different amounts of catalase present. So you certainly need to, to keep the mass or the volume of the potato, liver and apple uh, the same. Um, you're adding hydrogen peroxide, so you'd want to keep the concentration of that the same. All right, and um, you'd also want to uh, add the same volume uh, of hydrogen peroxide to each of your experiments, uh, and of course you want to keep the pH and the temperature the same. All right, so you keep everything constant, um, okay, in order to produce uh, uh, you know reliable results. Okay, uh, so we've just typed in then two variables, the concentration of hydrogen peroxide uh, and the mass of the sample. Okay, um, so moving on then to the last uh, part. From the table, liver contains the most catalase. Suggest an explanation uh, for this result. Okay, well the liver is an extremely metabolically active organ. Okay, and uh, it can actually produce... Um, uh, quite a bit of hydrogen peroxide, which, which is quite dangerous. So hydrogen peroxide needs to be uh, broken down uh, because of its high toxicity. So that's why you would expect then the uh, the liver to actually have uh, the most catalase. It's it's the organ that produces most uh, of the hydrogen peroxide. 
and you need to have that hydrogen peroxide removed. Okay, so uh, there's the uh, the answer there. You get one mark for saying the liver produces the most hydrogen peroxide, and second mark for it uh, for it needing to be broken down due to its high toxicity. Okay, so that uh, that question uh, was worth 14 marks. Uh, if we have a quick look uh, at the mark scheme, okay, uh, for question um, six. Okay, um, the first part, of course, is to do with the uh, the carbohydrates. Okay, um, I think that's all pretty self-explanatory there when you're talking about cellulose and hydrolysis and uh, so on. Okay, part B then is to do with the, uh, uh, the the protein structure. So the answer there was tertiary because that diagram had the uh, disulfide bonds. Um, then you wanted to talk about how the disulfide bonds affects the functioning of the protein and it's all to do with um, bringing out um, the idea that there's an enzyme present and um, so that there's an enzyme present and uh, you need to make reference to the active site uh, make sure you mention that it's complementary to the substrate and uh, allows enzyme substrate complexes to form Okay, lastly then is to do with the variables you keep constant during the catalase experiment. So there they are. I've mentioned the mass of the sample and I think I mentioned the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, but you could have had equal volumes of hydrogen peroxide or same pH, same temperature. All right. And lastly then, uh, why does the liver have the most amount of catalase well it's because it's metabolically active it produces the most hydrogen peroxide which needs to be broken down due to its uh, toxicity okay uh, and that's the end now of uh, question six